Thanks for joining us. We love getting to share the message of God's grace with the entire world. If his message has impacted your life, would you share your testimony with us by emailing it to stories at graceorlando.com. We love to hear what God is up to. You can also give in support of this ministry by going to our website and clicking on the give button at graceorlando.com. Thanks again. Well, good morning. How you guys doing? Good. Hey, look, I, I just got to reiterate something Alan said. VBS was just something special. And I want to give a, just a heartfelt thank you to everybody who was involved. I mean, there was like 50 or 60 of us in this room that were somehow involved in this thing, and it was awesome. So thank you guys so much. It really was a great year. Uh, as uh, Yes. As I was telling somebody before service, um, I, I can be very critical, believe it or not. I can be very uh, critical, and uh, I couldn't find one thing to, to critique. It was just a wonderful year and something that was just... Uh, I don't know, you watch the kids' faces, you watch a lot of these little guys, and some of their stories, you know, it's funny, we always assume, oh, they're kids, life is great, and you hear some of their little stories, you know, and it's awesome that they got an entire week of hearing about how much God loves them, so I'm super proud of our church, super proud of what the team came up with. Uh, this morning, we are, uh, we're talking about storytelling, we're, we're in a series, that we're going to wrap up next week, uh, I wanted you to have an opportunity to kind of hear from all the different staff, to kind of hear their stories a little bit, as well as uh, get a peek at what ministry looks like with them, okay? And maybe my hope is, is that over the course of this month, as you've heard from different people, and maybe you're in this place finding, you know, hey, I want to be a part. I want to find my place. Where do I kind of fit in here? And how do I get to know people and those kinds of things? Well, I'm hoping somebody you hear, maybe even today, would be somebody you say, hey, I'd like to partner with this guy. Uh, I'd like to partner along with them and see what, what life looks like in ministry, right? Uh, well, I want to give you an opportunity to, to look at some of the messiest ministry of the church, okay? And that is with our teenagers. How many of y'all know teenage life is not as uh, well sterilized as adults, I suppose, would be one way to say. It's messy, man. It's, it's teenage world, man. Things are crazy there. Y'all know. Don't, don't pretend like y'all don't know. Uh, and so I, I'm excited to introduce to you two people this morning. One is going to be our middle school director. He's going to come up in just a moment, uh, and that is Gabe Wells. He is uh, a phenomenal middle school director, as well as... Uh, as well as our media director, he's the one that put together that awesome video you just got to enjoy. And he does this stuff so fast, like he tries to get it out uh, as fast as possible. So really appreciate him, and we'll hear from him in just a moment. Uh, and then we're going to hear from Pastor Matt, who is our youth pastor. Uh, he is uh, uh, going to share a little bit more of his story. After his uh, last time speaking, people said, when is part two? When are we going to hear the continuation of the journey that God took these, this couple on, Matt and Ruthie? So we get to hear from them this morning, too. Super excited about that. So without further ado, Gabe, would you come on up and share with us? Hello, Grace Church. How's it going? Uh, I just wanted to share for a minute about what an incredible experience um, Alive has been. Um, like we were just singing about how Jesus really does change everything, and I don't think that there's a better testament to um, how true that is than these guys right here. Um, middle school can be one of the most difficult times in uh, your life. I think if all of us look back at our middle school experience, um, more of us would feel like, oh gosh, I never want to even think about middle school, than you would be thinking like, oh man, I'd love to go back and be 12 or 13 again. That was the best time of my life. I don't think anybody ever says that. But I think that these guys have the best chance of looking back at their middle school experience and saying, um, that was the first time that I, I experienced uh, the love of God, and it changed my life forever. Um, I look at these guys, and they are so much cooler than I ever was in middle school. <laughs> and there's one reason for that, and it sounds cheesy, but they're cooler because they understand where their identity is at. They know that their identity is not in uh, what they wear or if they have the coolest shoes or the right backpack or all those things that we all thought about when we were in middle school and how to fit in and am I good enough at football to fit in with this crowd? Am I good enough at whatever? They know that their identity is in none of those things. Their identity is in Christ and in being a child of God. And that fundamentally changes the way that they interact with the world and the way that they interact with each other. And you can see it in the, in the community of Alive. You can see it in the way that when a new person comes in, their first reaction isn't um, to outcast them or to push them away because they're scared of what might happen if a new person comes in. No, their first reaction is to love them because they've experienced a love that is so incredible that they have 
the only reaction to that is to then go and love other people. And it's just natural. They don't have to unlearn anything. They only know grace, and it is so evident in the way that they treat each other and in how cool they are. Um, they're the, the best group in the world, and I love them. So um, that's all I just wanted to share a little bit about how awesome these guys are and all the stuff that God is doing in their lives. So I think I'm supposed to give this to Matt now. Uh, <laughs> there you go, Matt. All right, you got to train them up right, you know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, how you guys doing? Good. Want to make sure everybody's lively before we get started. Uh, so we've been talking about storytellers, and it's been really good. I got we've got to hear from all sorts of ministries and all sorts of people, and uh, I've loved I've loved hearing everybody's story, and I I think. Uh, you know, what you, what you hear typically is how can you get involved, because that's actually what Storyteller is, is you're, you're learning to get involved and kind of tell your story. Um, and I, I think if you want to be involved in youth ministry, it can be kind of intimidating. Um, and the cool thing is I'm going to kind of take the pressure off. If you want to get involved, come talk. Um, I would love that. Um, but really, I believe that everybody in this room uh, can impact a young person's life. Um, and today, we're going to give you uh, five different ways to impact somebody's, a young person's life, okay? Um, I don't know if you guys were here uh, the last time I got to share my testimony, so I'm kind of like jumping right in um, to that, but the last time was kind of some low times, some hard times that I went through. This time, we're going to share some, like, some really good times, um, and I'm excited about sharing that, some highlights, and where we left off was, um, at this point in my life, uh, my parents had been separated, and um, we... Uh, we, meaning my mom and my two uh, little sisters and myself, we had all moved out and we moved into my aunt's house at this time, right? She had uh, graciously taken us in. Um, she was a Christian lady and uh, she went to a local church there. This is over in Melbourne. She went to a local church there and uh, not very long after she took us in, uh, because of uh, who I was, I caused a ruckus with my aunt, right? And she got mad and she was ready to kick us out, right? Uh, I had just, I, I, it was like a dispute that I caused. And I didn't, you know, I didn't know what to do. And my mom really didn't know what to do. She was really at a loss. Um, and so she knew, like, what I can do is I can probably take them up to this church. And so she called this church that was there locally in Melbourne. And she said, uh, like, hey, can we come see you? So she brought me up there. There was these two pastors that were there, and they brought me into this office, and we sat across from them, um, just real, like it was just the same day that all that happened. And so uh, what I'll say about that is um, I, I think I told you guys last time, I was 17, um, and I was at the height of my rage. Like, I was really angry. I think I told you guys the last time where every door in the house had holes in it, and I was trying to figure out what to do with my rage. I didn't really know. Uh, I was working out. I was uh, in involved in sports. Uh, I was going to counseling. I was seeing all sorts of therapists. Um, I was going to anger management, which I don't know if you guys have been to anger management, but it actually, like, makes you more angry while you're there. <laughs> Anybody been there? And so here we are. We're all angry, and I'm confused. Like, well, I don't know why we're, I am here. It just makes me mad. And so um, here's actually, I have a picture of myself really angry, at 17, right? <laughs> that was me. Um, I enjoyed everybody sharing pictures, so I got some pictures to share with you guys today. Um, God's really helped me since then. Um, but my mom had me going to all these things, and um, so I'm sitting here across from these two pastors, right? Had the, uh, the senior pastor and the youth pastor, and um, senior pastor, he was very cordial, Typically they are, they're nice guys, right? Said some really nice things and really encouraging. I don't remember much of what he said because it was just so nice and fluffy and I was like, I don't know, I don't know what, what that was. Then the youth pastor talked, right? The youth pastor had something to say. Um, and he was kind of like a cowboy looking guy. He had the boots and the wranglers and the flannel and the hair slicked back. His name was Lee Shaw and get, got real close to me, right? And I'm uncomfortable with this whole thing. And he's like, um, he's like, I'll tell you what, Matt. He's like, I, if, I, if it was me and you were under my roof and under my rules, 
Um, this, I'd have done way worse than what your aunt did. And what I think you need to do is you need to go back to your aunt and you need to apologize and you need to ask for forgiveness, right? And, and maybe beg for forgiveness. Whatever it's going to take to get you to stay at that house is what needs to happen. And I remember um, I kind of went red. Like I just, I just went blacked out and I don't really remember everything he said because at this point in my life, nobody talked to me that way. Like nobody, uh, you're going to talk to me and you're a man and this just isn't going to work like that. And I started to size him up. I think I can take this guy, right? The little <laughs> nice pastor, no big deal. The cowboy, uh, he's, he's gone, right? And so, anyways, after it, it quickly ended, thank God, it quickly ended, and we started to walk out, and he thought, um, I'm going to relate to Matt. Like, so he started having this conversation with me, and I, I was just like, what is, why is he trying to talk to me right now? And I don't like you. And so he's like, um, you know, what's my likes? What's my dislikes? And... I blew him off. He's like, you got to come to church with us sometime. And I remember I was like, I've already got my own church, which was a lie. I didn't have my own church. And uh, the one thing I do remember from that day um, was that even though um, he made me mad, um, I remember that those two men took time, right? They took time out of their schedule, and they spent with me, and they listened to me, and they tried to speak into my life. And so the number one way to impact a young person's life is to take time. Take time. Um, and then he did something I didn't know till years later. He went over to my mom. My mom's name is Liz. He went over to Liz, and he's like, look, Liz, if you can get him here, he said, I can work with him. I know he's got a lot of trouble. I know he's angry, but if you can get him here, I'll work with him. And up until that point, right, my mom, she'd been pretty, like, kind of a pushover. We'd gotten our way, um, but she kind of went into beast mode, right? Like, <laughs> She made sure we were at church every time the doors were open. I mean, back then, you guys don't remember this, maybe, I don't know, but Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, you guys remember mid midweek services, right? Then we had like a Tuesday night puppet team that I had to be involved in, <laughs> right? Which I'm like, I don't like puppets and I don't like any of this stuff, but this is what we have to do. And we fought her tooth and nail. Like we were not, like this is not what our life was like. Um, and so this went on um, for months, right? I actually have a picture of my mom when she was angry dragging us to church. A little bit like that. She was real tough. That's why we went. Um, no, truthfully, unless we were out of gas or our car was broke down, which happened from time to time, we were at church. And so this war between me and my mom and my sisters, this went on for months until one day, I remember about mid-July, it was on a Monday, and I heard a knock on the door, right? Somebody knocked on the door, and it was the, pa the youth pastor's wife. And she was there, and she was taking me to this retreat. And I'm like, I don't know why this is happening. But the youth pastor and my mom had talked, and they decided I was going to a retreat. Um, I was like, I don't even know what a retreat is. Like, they got treats there? What's going on? So the second way I'll say to impact a young person's life is be a leader, right? Be a leader. Sunday night, if you have a young person or you know a young person, um, right, push them. Um, my parents pushed me. And I don't know if you guys ever uh, said this before, I don't think so, but if you ever have the mentality, well, I'm going to let my kid make up their own mind, and maybe they'll follow God. I'll tell you what, I hate hearing that because, like, you're here, and I feel like that's a good thing, right? And so push your young person. Push them to come on a Sunday morning. Push them to come on a Sunday night. Lead them, right? And obviously it was a good thing. And so you guys lead them to brush their teeth, don't you? Some of them, right? You guys brush your teeth? Lead them. Lead them. Take them. <laughs> Right, so at this retreat, um, they had this special speaker. His name was Joseph Jennings. Don't know if you guys ever heard of him. He was a motivational speaker back, back then. And um, it, the wild part was, so I'm at Melbourne High School, and this random kid walks up to me, and he hands me this book, right? And it was actually Joseph Jennings' testimony. And um, this is in a public school, and I remember um, it, it just talked about how he was an angry young person, and he ran the streets, and he got involved in gangs and all this stuff. And... Uh, it talked about how God came into his life and, and took all the hate and all the anger and put love into his heart. And I thought, this is just wild. And I could not put the book down. I read the whole book, and I didn't read books at this time. And so, um, anyways, this speaker bust a couple hundred kids down to, this, to our church, our little church in Melbourne, into this little retreat. He bust a couple hundred kids from New York City and from Chicago, right? And um, this is something I believe our church is really good at already, but the third way to impact a young person's life is to be a giver, right? Be a giver, right? Whenever you hear about a retreat or you hear about a camp, 
and you have a teenager and you know a teenager, make sure they come. Ruthie's grandfather, he was a hillbilly, right? I know you wouldn't look at Ruthie and think she's got a grandfather hillbilly, right? From Kentucky, <laughs> from the mountains of Kentucky. And he used to say, if you're giving while you're living, then you're knowing where it's going, right? <laughs> I'll say it again. If you're giving while you're living, then you're knowing where it's going. Um, and that's why we put so much emphasis on camp and we pour so much resources into youth ministry, into the kids' church, and we did this huge BBS thing is because we don't look at events, we don't look at camp, uh, we don't look at those as just an event, but we actually look at it as a way to impact a young person's life and to radically change their life. And so they were jamming, man. I, we're at this retreat, and like, this is not my style, right? And again, this is in the 90s, and they're jamming, the drummer's going, and the um, singers are singing, and the guitar's playing, and they had smoke machines, and they had black lights. You guys remember black lights? Those were like big in the 90s, right? And all that stuff was going, right? And me and my cousins were kind of in the back, and we're mocking them and making fun, and like, this is just so silly, like, what's going on? And uh, and really, I believed in Jesus, and I believed in God, but, like, I had never really had much of an experience with God. I had never really, like, I, I actually believed at the time that we were distant and that I had done so many wrong things for him to love me. Um, and I remember uh, being in the back, and Joseph Jennings, right, he, he stood up in the middle of all this, and he gave out three calls. Um, and the first call was, um, if, you've, if you've never been uh, filled with the Spirit, uh, come on up front, right? And I was like, I don't know what that means. Like, like again, I was coming out of the party lifestyle. I'd partied the night before, and I was confused as to what being filled with spirit was. And so he called, he called a bunch of people up front, right? And they all raised their hands, and I was like, okay, see, that was God. Like, I'm glad I didn't go, because that was obviously them, and that's not me. I don't know if you guys are. I'm not a going up front kind of person. Sometimes I'm forced to be up here, but that's got, I guess that's God's humor. Um, but <laughs> that was not me. I'm like, I'm cool. Like, I got this, right? And then uh, the second call was, if you haven't been filled in the Spirit in a long time, come on up front. And I was like, I don't even know what he's talking about. Like, what is he saying? Like, okay, cool. And then the third call was, um, if, you, uh, if you're a leader here, uh, come on up front and pray for these people. And I was like, I'm not a leader. Like, I've been going here for three months. I'm not, I'm not going up front. And so this leader stood up that was next to me, and he grabbed my hand, and he's like, come on up front. Like, let's go pray for these people. And I'm like, I don't pray. Like, I don't even talk to God. Why are we praying for people? Like, I'm not a leader. Like, what's going on? And he just kind of is like, come on, come here. So I go up to the front, and there's this guy that's up here. And he's probably 6'3", six, 6'4", six, right? Like, tall guy, super tall. And he's got his hands up, way up. And so he's even taller with his hands kind of thing. And I'm like, gosh, this guy's huge. And I don't, I don't know what to do, right? Like, I, again, I've never prayed for anybody. I've never even said, like, God bless this person. I don't say those things. Um, but I looked over, and I saw another leader praying uh, for people, and he was, like, laying his hands on people, and I'm like, I don't know what that is. What, what, you put your hands on people when you pray for people, right? And so I, didn't, I wanted to fit in. You know, I'm 16, 17, and I want to fit in, and I don't want people to know that I don't know what I'm doing. And so I'm like, I'm going to put my hands on this guy. And so when I put my hands on this guy, no joke, I felt this, like, electricity go through my arms, and, like, my hairs were all standing up, and my, my hair was standing up on my neck, and I'm like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> and I took my hands off, right? I was like, whoa, like, this is not anything I believe in at all, right? And, uh, but I was like, you know, I kind of felt kind of good, so I think I'm going to try that again. And so I put my hands back on him, and the moment I put my hands on him, I could feel this, just this power rolling off of this guy, and he's crying, and um, and I'm like, I don't know what this is, but it feels so good right now. <laughs> and, and so, anyways, I can hear people praying, right? And I'm like, I don't know what they're praying. Like, I don't know what they're saying, right? So I, I, it sounded different. And I'm like, I'm just going to kind of pretend because that's what you do when you're praying for people, I guess. And I'm listening. And so I'm like, I'm going to just kind of fake this whole praying and being a leader and thing. And so I, I, I hear... I, and I start saying, la, 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 right? I'm kind of mocking a little bit because I don't really know what's going on. And the more I would pray, the more I would feel this power coming into me. And I'm like, I don't know, but I just remember going, la, 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 right? And I'm like, ah. And this guy in front of me, like, he's, he's received. So I just, I, I begin to lift my hands up because I needed it just as bad as that guy. And I didn't know, I, I didn't know I needed it. I didn't know what was going on. And I remember lifting my hands and these people were like, what are you doing? You got to pray. And I'm like, no, I need to receive. I don't know what's going on. 
and they don't know, and I don't know, and so I'm just like continuing to receive, and I'm like, oh, and, and as I was standing there, I just could feel this waterfall just falling all over me, and it just, it felt like God is just saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, and all the religion and all the stuff I'd heard my whole life that I got to try and live up and do right and do all these things, I, all I could feel is my father just saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, right? And I just stood there, it seemed like forever, just worshiping God and just like, and I never worshiped God, I never prayed, I'd never done any of this. This was not my thing, right? Um, but the only thing I can describe it as just receiving some type of love and some power that I'd never felt before. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, and the NIV, it says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, and I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I'll tell you, if this doesn't line up with your doctrine, don't worry, it didn't line up with mine. <laughs> like, I had no doctrine. Like, I didn't know, I didn't even know John 3.16. Like, I, I, I just was like there and I was just receiving God and his love for me. Uh, it just happened. Um, so that weekend, I remember going to all my friends, right? Um, and they did not believe in God, like definitely did not believe in God and basically walked into uh, them this w over the weekend. And I'm like, hey, guys, I'm like, like, and they're like, hey, man, what's up? And I'm like, hey, like something happened this week. And they're like, okay, what happened? And I'm like, like, I'm different. And they're like, we know you're different. Like, what do you mean? And I'm like, no, something happened. Like, I received God. Like, God is in my heart. And like, I received the Holy Spirit. I didn't care what it sounded like. I'm just like, something happened. Like, I'm different. And I just kept saying it over and over. They're like, we get it. Like, you're different. I'm like, no, you can be different too. Like, you can join whatever's going on. I'm telling you, like, something happened. And they're like, okay, cool. And I just couldn't shut up. I could not shut up about this whole thing. And really, that was just the beginning of my journey. Like, I, I just kind of started that. And I really was just excited to know God and to be telling people about him and who his love was was, and the sad part is it didn't take very long, uh, but I got a good dose of religion right after all that. Like, I, I mean, I got a lot of like, this is what, this is how you gotta keep that, and this is how you gotta keep going, this is how you gotta try harder, and, and so I didn't wanna lose this position I had with God. I'm like, no, there's no way that anybody's taking this from me, so like, I, the competitive nature in me, I'm just gonna try and try, try a lot harder, right? And one thing I loved doing was reading God's word. I loved re reading the word. And then I heard about these things called Bible schools, right? Never heard of a Bible school. I'm like, you get to go to school and learn more about God? Like, that's what I want to do with my life. And so I had all these people in our church that were like, go for it. Like, go. And, and so the fourth thing I want to tell you uh, to be able to encourage a young person is, or impact a young person is to encourage. Number four, be an encourager, right? It's so important to encourage young people to do something for God. Um, I went to Bible school in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which was really quite an amazing experience. It's where I met the love of my life, Ruthie, who literally changed my life upside down and continues on a daily basis to change it upside down, right? Uh, here's a picture of us on our date, right? My little highlights, it's so cute, little <laughs> monkeys in the background. The wild part is she tried breaking up with me that night. Our first date, she tried breaking up. She's got commitment issues. She's still, we're still working on those things. Um, <laughs> Right? But she's, she's an overcomer. Um, so, anyways, this Bible school was great because we learned tons about God and his word. Right? And so much so that we didn't even have to, like, read our Bible. Like, it was just continually coming out for hours. And I'm like, why do we read our Bible? Like, we can just go to school forever. Um, but... Um, there was definitely a subtle teaching there um, while we were at school that definitely put a certain pressure on you, right? Like, I don't know if you guys ever heard these phrases, but if you don't do this, then you, um, you might not have this. You guys ever heard those? Or if you're not seeing a healing in your life, then you need to do dot, dot, dot. Or you have not because you ask not, right? And I didn't realize, like, that's, those are good things. I get what you're saying there. But there was an unhealthiness that I had to where I, I, got to, I'm, I got to work harder for this thing. Like, I got to try, and I got to obtain, and I got to work for, right? Um, so we graduated with this kind of mentality and this kind of thinking, and we moved back to Ohio where my wife's from, um, and we worked for her dad. 
uh, in a real estate business and got involved in a, in a local church there. But we still, there was still like this unsettling that was going on. And so that youth pastor cowboy guy that I told you guys about that was over in Melbourne, he decided he was going to um, move out to Arizona, right? And then I was kind of intrigued. I'm like, what are you doing out there? And he's like, well, we possibly might start a church. And I was like, cool, like, let's go for this. And so, and, and Ruthie and I both, uh, we moved that way, which was quite the experience. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Arizona, but from Florida to Arizona, it's about 5,500 feet. The place that we were looking at was 5,500 feet above sea level. It was just outside of a place called Prescott, Arizona, and then about an hour away from the Grand Canyon. Um, and in, like I said, I thought when we got there, like, this was the pinnacle of following God. Like, we're not going to follow God any more than Arizona because it's completely different. And um, to the point where we went to, like, the first week we were there, we went to a branding. You guys ever been to a branding? Nope, I hadn't either. And <laughs> that was quite an experience. And then that night after the branding, I went to a, a cowboy church, right, where they, we baptized, like, five people in a horse trough. And I was like, this <laughs> is heaven. I don't know what else this is, right? This is crazy. And I remember, like, mind you, my wife had a different experience, like, to the point where she was, th that, tr that Sunday at church, in our little house church, she was in the bathroom bawling her eyes out because she thought we did not follow God. Like, this is the opposite <laughs> spectrum, right? So that church started with just a few families, and it grew really quickly. Um, and it was interesting because it wasn't very long that we started to no notice some errors in our uh, preaching, right? Uh, we, we were spending most of our time telling people what to do and how they need to act right and how they need to live right and how they need to uh, read their Bibles right and how they need to worship right and how they need to pray right. And one day I was reading my Bible right, right, and I couldn't help but see some different scriptures pop out. And in fact, it was a lot of scriptures. It was like all of Romans and all of Hebrews and all of Ephesians, and the list goes on and on and on, right? And I remember asking Ruthie, I'm like, in all of our getting right, did we get something wrong, right? Like nobody's doing what we're actually telling them to do. And uh, here's what I'll say. It's just because you've, lear you've learned something a certain way, right, it doesn't mean that it's right. You can be sincere, but you can be sincerely wrong at the same time. Um, so I talked with Ruthie and my pastor about it, and I'm like, why don't we like, st start telling them who they already are in God and how righteous they already are, and let's see uh, like, what actually happens. Like, let's see if they can find out how good our God actually is. And I remember um, Ruthie was like, what do we got to lose? I'm like, we have nothing to lose. Let's go for it. And um, so we started telling them scriptures um, like this, like, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And um, as he is, so are we in this world. And there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit, right? And then God is for you, not against you. And then there was other scriptures we'd read like, um, how he has the hairs of our head numbered, and he has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west, which means basically like he's intricately involved in every aspect and every detail of our lives, and yet the one thing he doesn't know anything about is our sin. It's confusing, right? And I was like, so the, no the fifth way to impact a young person's life is to begin to see them the way God sees them to see them how God sees them. It doesn't mean that we can't show them a better road to take in life, right, and a better way to start, but start seeing them how God sees them. And the best part was we started seeing results. Like, we started seeing, like, all sorts of things happen. Like, we started seeing them act right, and we started seeing them live right, and we started seeing them talk right and pray right and read their Bible right. All of a sudden, all this stuff was happening, and this was really confusing because, man, I thought I had it all figured out. Like, I mean, I've been to Bible school. I've done it all. I've seen it all, right? But I couldn't deny the results we were seeing. I could not deny that. And in the midst of our awesome experience, right, we had this little uh, Bambino, uh, Zoe, right? We had a little Zoe, and she changed our life. This is in Arizona in front of our pastor's house. But uh, she changed our lives, man, like just rocked our world. It was like we were driving along, and then this wrench just like fell into the engine. And I was like, I don't know what just happened. Um, and I wasn't making much out there, um, and so I thought I need to start providing for my family a little different. We switched gears, and uh, we got offered a really good job up in Ohio. And uh, so we went out to Ohio, um, tried to make that work, and I remember um, thinking, like, we're just going to go there, and we're going to find a church that teaches grace, and this is going to be so good. And the truth be told, we struggled the whole time. Like, we struggled hard. And I even had friends that had started churches and churches with my background, and I'm like, I'm sure we can talk to them, and 
and it was a struggle. It was a battle. Um, and I remember the more we tried, the more we'd get frustrated to the point, I remember we even bought a house and I'm like, we're going to buy a house and we're going to settle in and we're just going to like um, watch Grace Teachers and we're going to read our Bibles and we're not going to go to church anymore. Like this is going to be so good, right? <laughs> And we tried that, and it just wasn't that good. It was like, cool, like, I don't know what we're doing here. Um, but um, I always had a desire in my heart um, to move back to Florida. Always had that desire. Um, I just didn't know how that was going to work and what that was going to look like. And so I, Ruthie and I prayed about it, like, let's pray about Florida, and like, let's see. And Ruthie started looking for um, different places online, and that was a struggle, too. I don't know if you guys have ever looked for a church here that teaches a lot of something that we teach, but, like, it's hard to find a church like what we're talking about. And so... Um, Ruthie, uh, one day I was at work, so be careful when you go to work, but Ruthie <laughs> decided she was going to make a phone call to one of these churches, right? And the first one she called was this church. And Gabby and her uh, had a great conversation. R Ruthie called and was kind of probing her about some of the different questions and everything that, R that Ruthie and I had as requirements. She was just checking the list off, checking it off to the point where she got a little excited and she's like, hey, by the way, we used to be youth pastors. If you guys are ever hiring, please let us know kind of thing. And, uh, so I got home from work, and I could tell she was all springy and spry, and I'm like, what are you, what's going on? You know, taking care of babies, usually you're like upset about something, but anyways, <laughs> what did I do right, kind of thing, I'm getting myself in trouble. Anyways, uh, focus, what we're talking about. So, walk in, she's all springy and spry, and she's like, I, um, I, I called a church today, and I was like, where? She's like, down in Florida. And I was like, why'd you do that? She's like, oh, and I gave them all your information, and I told them that we're, that we're youth pastors, and they said they'd call me back. And I was like, don't do that again, please, <laughs> ever. Like, that's not how I want to do it. Because what I was always taught is, like, you go to a church, you make sure they're not all crazy, right? And then you get involved, right? That's, the, that's what you do. And, right? And so clearly she had a different idea. So the wild part was... Uh, Javen and Clark had just walked out of a meeting. They were in a meeting together deciding that they needed to hire a youth pastor like ASAP. They were way past due. And so we FaceTimed and we were FaceTiming and I asked Javen, I'm like, so when are you guys looking to hire? And Javen's like, oh, next month. And I was like, cool. So I hung up the, we hung up the FaceTime and I told her, I'm like, there's no way. Like we just gutted our whole house. Like there's no way. So we got busy. We started remodeling. Um, and I remember, um, the house uh, was not selling, right? And school was getting close, and I didn't know what to do. I'm like, what do we do? And Ruthie's like, why don't we just like move and like sell everything? And I'm like, yeah, we we're gonna have a garage sale. And she's like, no, no, sell everything, like the cars, like clothes, all this stuff. And I'm like, look, I'm like, I got tools, like 15 years worth of tools. Like you don't just sell those. And I remember like, um, I sat down, I took five minutes, and I was like, I got up and I was like, all right, let's do it. And I, I mean, we sold everything and to the point where I was taking tools. I was putting them in piles and like, I'm like, how much? And they're like 15 bucks. And they're like, yeah. And, you know, they're walking away thinking yes. And I'm like, I, you didn't get a good deal. I gave it to you. Let's just be honest. Okay. <laughs> We're ready to go. Um, but we shipped about 15 boxes, um, to Florida and we all, we bought plane tickets and we flew down. Turns out my mom randomly lives five minutes away from the church. I'd already been to the church multiple times. We didn't even know any of this until we got here. Um, but we, we left, and, and the house still wasn't selling. And I remember, like, we should have been stressed. Like, we should have been freaking out. Like, we should have been out of our minds. Like, what are we doing? This is crazy. And the wild part was uh, we weren't stressed at all. There was a peace on us that, like, even to this day, I'm like, I don't, I don't understand it. Like, we should have been freaking out. And I really think the truth of the matter is, yeah, there was definitely a peace from God. But I think we were just so excited to be a part of a church that taught grace and that we didn't have to every single Sunday unpack everything that we had just learned. Like, let's see if this is what we agree. No, that we don't, we don't, we don't, right? The reason I love working here is because being able to teach these young people, right? And, the, and I can just tell them like it is, right? And they don't have to unpack everything. And the best part about it is every Sunday, as far as I know, she's not in the bathroom crying <laughs> because we missed God. It's good news. Um, but as we, as we learn to storytell this year, like as, as we learn to get involved, as we learn how to impact young people's lives this year, like you got a young person you know, you can impact them right where you're at. You don't got to call me and say, Matt, how can I? I'm like, look, it's real easy. I just gave you five steps. Just take time, right? Be a leader. Be a giver. 
and be an encourager and then begin to see them the way God sees them, right? And the cool part about all of that is that I know, because I've seen a lot of different places and how they do it, but um, we're building on good ground and we're gonna see fruit that lasts. And these young people get to grow up and not have to find out all the, like, how do I, how do I unlearn this and how do I stop doing that? And, oh, I've tried this for years and now I gotta unlearn. I mean, I went to Bible school, I had to unlearn a lot of stuff that I just, it was in there and I didn't know. And I'm still unpacking things and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize like that wasn't, that wasn't something good. So you guys can do that right where you're at. I wanna pray for you guys if that's cool and we're gonna dismiss. But Father, I thank you God for everybody that's here. I just thank you God that we can be uh, storytellers right where we're at, God. We get to tell your story and what you've done for us. We love you, God. We thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy in our lives. Thank you, God, for leading us and guiding us into your truth. And uh, we trust in you in that. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen.